service. And so I want to invite uh, Pastor Anthony um, to please come. And uh, Pastor Anthony has been, he, he has been the pastors for a Touchstone International Church for more than 10 years. Uh, prior to they were their church into the youth and the young adults in India. And this heart, their heart is for the disciple of the family with a strong emphasis on the word and the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, they are a family of four with two kids, Joshua and Joellen, who are here with us today. Oh, there they are. Um, and I would like to hear more from you what you have to say because it, it is something that resonates our heart. So please. Thank you, Romeo. Romeo is doing a good job, isn't he? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I've asked for some help with the clicking because I just want to stay tuned to the Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> when Pastor Sean uh, texted me, he said, uh, I want you to speak on the cost of leadership. I literally texted him back and said, ah, what cost? There's no cost. <laughs> He didn't get it first. So he said, no, 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 I want you to talk about all the sacrifices. I said, cool down, brother. I know what you mean. <laughs> Praise God. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Seeing that we are in revival. So give me two minutes to organize myself. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. The cost of leadership. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you. Spirit of God, we ask you to do your work in us, Lord. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to speak to our hearts. To do a very deep work. That, Lord, you will birth revival in us today, Lord. I thank you for this church. We thank you for Pastor Phil and Pastor Norma and and we thank you for the journey. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you are beginning new things. And we thank you for every one of the young people here and the leaders here. As we want to look to you, Lord, just pray that you will give us utterance, that we will speak your word, and that, Lord, we will receive this word. That today when we receive your word, we will not harden our hearts or justify, but we would receive it, Lord, and say, speak, Lord. Bring us into revival, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, when God calls us to lead, we need to know that we represent Christ in the lives of people. Okay? Ambassadors. What does ambassadors mean? Whatever office we have, whether pastor, deacon, whatever a preacher, evangelist, teacher, whatever office God has entrusted to us, we have to understand that we are representatives of Christ himself in the lives of people. Whatever we say, how, how we conduct ourselves, everything before the people has to represent Christ. That is Christ's heart's desire. I want to take for us the key scripture for this evening which is from Hebrews chapter 11, 24 to 27. Thank you, Lord. Um, if you can get your eyes on the scripture, whether it's on the screen behind me or in your Bibles in front of you, um, I'd like for us to read it together, right? So if you have the scripture in front of you, say amen. Let's read together. Hebrews 11, verses 24 to 27. By faith, Moses when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Wow. I want to talk to you about three things. 
in this journey of consecration that we are consecrated vessels that God can flow through us and the gospel in its truest purest and complete form will hit this generation and spark revival amen amen praise be to god you see 25 years ago <clears throat> i left my home my family obeyed god's call got on a train with the equivalent of 40 dollars a bag and i went to the city god was first leading me to i was so grateful i was a prodigal son who came home and god had shown me mercy and i said lord the rest of my life i'm going to serve you nothing else mattered i had no property to my name i had no inheritance coming to me i had nothing but as i stood on that train as it shot through the night and i looked at the city behind me that i had grown up all my life i had a hope that this person who had called me this god who called me was personally with me and his promises were true and he was calling me to leave everything and go to the place he was showing me in the very first year i met my wife in that city she belonged to a, a group of young girls who had prayed for revival she had prayed for revival since she was 18 years old when she fell in love with jesus and we both knew and we wrapped ourselves around the vision of amos 911 of revival and at that time for us revival was a whole load of miracles and people falling down and all of that as i progress through the word you will understand that god knows god has much more in store amen we began our journey and for the first 8 years was an adventure and we started a youth church after 8 years it had grown but the lord said leave this place and go to the land i will show you and it was so hard to pick up our bags grab both of our children and leave all of our church our young people um every one of them and uh one month from last month we we arrived 15 years ago in australia another adventure of faith but in 2019 that's about 5 years ago god confronted both of us and he began a revival in our life what we're going to share tonight and i keep saying we is because either one of us can talk about this this is from our life and we're sharing things we have learned from god over the last 5 years you see this young generation has to see more than moses moses more than david more than paul they have to see jesus if romans 8:28 is true every one of us will speak it saying everything is working for my good but what is romans 8:29 whom he foreknew he predestined to be transformed into the image of his son that's why he went on the cross that ultimately after our job here is done christ wants us he wants to see us walk like jesus in this life and the community has to see jesus in every one of us this is god's goal and thankfully it doesn't happen overnight but it's a journey of faith by his grace and by his power alone by his perfect plan alone so when you look at moses it says here that his motive the reason why he was able to do those three things was because his heart and his mind was set on eternity for him it was not about this life jesus was not just to give me stuff for this life give me a healing give me a job and limit jesus to this life to him he saw him who was invisible and eternity was in his heart and that's what the scripture is telling us thankfully the lord revealed spirit revealed to hebrew the writer of hebrews and tells us why moses was able to give it up we're going to three things the measure of a man the pleasure of sin and the treasure of egypt are you with me we're going to go through all three and i pray that this message will end with us getting on our faces before god living a life of consecration 
as a lifestyle is a great price we will need to pay as leaders by the grace of god and only by the mercy and power of god you know in philippians 2 we talk about the measure of a man moses refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter i've never ever gone to that level but i had a friend a childhood friend who i grew up with and he was royalty in india and i can see what that can bring so to some extent i can understand but i cannot even begin to fathom what moses gave up he refused that that position pharaoh's son do you know what comes with it when you wake up in bed every morning you step out if you're pharaoh's son do you know what comes with that position jesus in philippians 3 we read he derobed himself of his profile paul strangely a jew a pharisee he's got all the qualifications and in Phil- in philippians 3 he says i count them all as loss why for the for the for the pro- for the return of knowing christ wow he was able to estimate knowing christ more value than any any other thing that this life can give in philippians 2 5 to 8 let's read that together get your eyes on the word and we'll read it together it's so important to get your eyes on scripture so let's read it together philippians 2 let this mind be in you which was also in christ Jesus let's read it together who being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death on the cross In Philippians 3:7 to 11 Paul writes this way What things were gain to me these I have counted loss for Christ Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and i don't he doesn't regret he's not pained he says i count them as rubbish that i may gain christ because knowing jesus is not a instant thing on the day you were born again it is an everyday pursuit of the face of god it is knowing him so that you can then show him that is what it is all about and so such such a focus you know today Uh, and i say this without judgment because like i said this is some things god confronted us about so i want to say it like this today if you talk about leadership in the church there's a lot of profile you have to have an appearance you got to have a look you, it's it's all about what you wear it's, it's just so much a focus on it now in isaiah 53 the bible says jesus he wasn't even good to look at he was comely in his appearance you've got to be able to speak well for all the young people i want to tell you you don't need that you don't need that do you think paul wrote romans and this massive doctrines of romans and hebrews only so that intellectuals can understand it how did the early church be so powerful i know that the gospel hasn't changed he hasn't changed it so something's happened in how we are preaching it or how we are teaching it or how we've been taught it in fact maybe we've taken our experience and taught it as a doctrine revival is often not finding something new but it is god restoring us back to the original thing amen, amen. and i believe the season is coming when the church is going to bring out the gospel in its truth in its fullness and in its purest form yes. the this this scripture is not just for intellectuals In 1 Corinthians 1:27 he says he chose the foolish to confound the wise because this is not by intellect it is it is received by revelation of the holy spirit amen 
son tabashe kasandara let's go forward so this profile this appearance there's just far too much of a focus on that that doesn't matter what god wants is a consecrated vessel that he can flow through somebody who is not mulling with this and mulling with that and then saying i still i still want jesus but he will give us the grace to be set apart essentially that means holy to be set apart for him alone and this is how god confronted us and he showed us so many things had slipped into the cracks in our lives things that we were never accustomed to in our entire lifetime together as 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 a couple and as a family we began to allow all of these 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 focuses and the lord confronted me and he said you're doing great sacrifices you know we thought the sacrifices we've made the the things we've given up the work we've put in over the last 25 years for the for the lord we thought that that's really amazing but the lord confronted us and he confronted the motives of why we do something sometimes we go to great extents to serve and to sacrifice to get a little name there to get a little appreciation and the lord said that's self idolatry you've got to get off the throne we must decrease and he must increase we has come to that place we won't even desire somebody to walk up and say that's really good or we, we shouldn't even fall for such things but it's a journey to get there but faith comes by hearing which is probably why he sent us here today the second thing was moses gave up was the pleasures of sin the pleasures of sin you know today life is about pleasures for christians we are called for revival so we'll speak to christians it's about okay i'm done with god i've done with my bible reading i'm done with this now let me go see what appetite i can satisfy each one has some appetite what those impulses what do you feel like today what do you and we we fall for that but the scripture says we are soldiers soldiers are disciplined they don't just go where the body wants them to go they don't just go what the body feels like doing soldiers are temperate in all things that's what the bible says right today is a pleasure filled life if i serve god i finish done with it now i go let me see what's the next pleasure what's the next i'm not calling out anything because each one has your own pleasures so i don't want to call out any things right i want to let the spirit of god make it obvious to you as you take this word and seek him or as you're listening but each one has we seem to have this justification i've done what i have to do for god now i can appease myself you see that self comes in again it is a pleasure filled lifestyle the world around us is a is living in in a world it's a world of dissipation that means earn burn just look at what i can enjoy and how i can satisfy this flesh and i'll i'll have to say this to you you might you might think it's a harsh statement but i'll say this to you for most of our friends in our companies and our our corporate world or wherever we work out in the world out there our lifestyle and their lifestyle has very little difference except for the fact that on sundays we go to church or that we may pray we consume the same things we watch the same things we have our same idols i'm from india so it's cricket i have demi gods when god confronted me about it, it was demi gods right i have my friends at work and i can tell you they what what they worship <laughs> if they open them up what comes out is what you worship all the time what you're talking about is what you worship right and our life has become a life of pleasure a little bit of work for god and then pleasure I want to challenge the leaders today and say I grew up on that on that hill called St Thomas Mount in the city of Chennai. I stood at that place where this saint was martyred where they put the spear through him. And I said this to a brother I said how come they lived lives like that and we can have this life where we can do a little for God and then have a little enjoyment and that brother said to me oh that's all for only for Paul and them it's not for us. beware of such gospel in corinthians it talks about another gospel another spirit and another jesus the church is full of it today 
and it's such so subtle that you will not be able to unless you're walking with the discerning of god are you with me moses let's read philippians 3:17 to 20 philippians 3 verse 17 to 20 let's read it together brethren join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern for many walk of whom i have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of christ i was a pastor and the spirit of god spoke this to me very difficult to handle i justified so much i said i have nothing else in my life lord is my family is church i worked seven days for the last 15 years here and then seven days so i i don't have a boat i don't have a something that i enjoy a hobby nothing and the lord said you're the enemy of the cross i said why and he took me through the next verse little by little jesus started becoming about this life how can i get a promotion at work how can i grow in the ministry how can i come to this and how can i grow and jesus said he, he brought this word to me he said they are the enemies of the cross whose end is destruction whose god is their belly and whose glory is in their shame now listen who set their mind on earthly things life is all about this earthly stuff but our mind is and it's only when we go to a funeral we get all eternity minded it's only when you read the obituary of a friend or someone his past starting to some of my classmates starting to drop like fly flies and i said lord i'm not that old <laughs> and all of a sudden we are eternity minded but that's not the way god wants us to walk moses his entire focus was to get there paul himself said i press on to grab hold of that for which he has grab hold of me in 1 corinthians 9 i'm not going to read that too much 25 to 27 well actually let's read that together and everyone who let's read it together and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things now they do it to obtain a perishable crown but we for an imperishable crown therefore i run thus not with uncertainty thus i fight not as one who beats the air but i discipline my body and bring it into subjection lest when i have preached to others i myself should become disqualified god introduced me to the concept that all my ministry is not going to qualify me to enter heaven on that day they'll come and say lord lord and he'll say i get away from me i didn't even know you oh we cast out demons we spoke in tongues ho oh, rashanda rabasha i don't know you see you later cuz you have not done the will of my father that was such a confronting word but one of my dear brothers in the lord said to us if the lord is speaking to you and it doesn't look like it's true i just want you to know the lord will not wrongly accuse you so you go and seek the lord and the lord will make it clear and god gave us grace to start seeking him and it took months but after a while the the penny dropped and the lord began to open up our heart why because Je- jeremiah 17:9 says the heart is deceptive and the first person it's dece- deceiving is you the first person your heart is deceiving is you so it's not about self introspection and my estimate of myself but this is in the light of god's word lord where do you see me today lord purify my heart Lord cleanse me of this world. Lord, I want to be that bride that you're coming back for. You see Paul says there, I don't run with uncertainty. You know this walk as a Christian suddenly you're following, suddenly you're standing, suddenly you're on fire. That's that uncertain walk. When he when he rocks up you don't know, you're not certain if we are that blameless Christ. So that's the wrong gospel that we've believed. That is okay. what happens we sang that song you're underneath my feet 
That's true. Because what he came back for was to restore the authority and the dominion that was lost in the Garden of Eden. And I can tell you, we're only on the journey to having victory over the nature of sin. When it says sin in the New Testament, it means the very nature of sin. It's not talking about the acts of sin. We get so focused on acts. It's talking about the very nature of sin that Christ has come to set us free from. And lastly, the third one, Moses, he turned away <laughs> from the treasures of Egypt. Gosh, there must have been a lot of treasure there. If you ask the question, who wants to be rich? In a room full of believers, truthful believers. Oh, well, let me actually ask the question here. Who wouldn't mind being wealthy? Yeah. Who wouldn't mind having, you know, I don't need to look at the bank. There's so many zeros, it doesn't fit on my phone. I need to get a bigger phone. Yeah. We like it, no? But we hate to admit it, that we have a love for money. If you don't have a love for money, like me, I said to God, I don't have love for money. Ah, we've lived by faith. We didn't know where the next... B b milk bottle was coming for our children. We lived for years like that. We sacrificed. We didn't chase after carriers with money. And we, all these, this, this song I sang to the Lord. And he said, you don't have love for money, but you've got a fear of lack. So you keep holding up and holding up. Because you have a fear of lack, you don't want to trust in me. And the Lord Jesus makes it very clear. He says, this is, 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 he makes it very clear in, in, in um, Matthew 6.24. He says, you cannot serve God and serve mammon. I'm still working through that in my, in my journey with the Lord. I can't say I'm completely victorious. But I know in the spirit realm, I'm already victorious. I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from a place of victory. So I know it's already done. But I'm pressing in. How about you? I want to challenge you today. When you see those cars, aren't you covetous? When you see those houses, aren't you covetous? When you see those branded stuff, aren't you so covetous? Covetousness is a sin of idolatry. It's witchcraft. And we blame all these guys who go and do all the other stuff and we think we are much better because we just thought it in our hearts, yeah? The Spirit of God is confronting us today and saying, let's get truthful before the Lord. He wants us to be rid of this God of mammon. We have to be set free because we are not going to rock up and enter heaven holding this idol. This idol of self has to be dethroned tonight. The journey has to begin tonight. As leaders, when we serve, when we do anything for God, we should not go and say, because I did that, now I'm sure God is going to bless me on this earth. We've, we've turned the gospel like that. There's some sense of entitlement that as we go, there's a strength. I have fasted for 21 days. Now there's a confidence. The confidence comes out of the fasting and that is the ministry of works. That is religion. And that is abominable to God. Any of our efforts before God is abominable to him. It is purely by grace. He's done everything. As we bring it to, to, this, to this place where we respond to God, you need to know the season the Lord is in. In 2020, uh, mm, the Lord began to speak dreams. And in the year of 2020, the Lord gave me a dream. That I will be here today. Strange, no? He didn't give me the details of me standing on the stage. But he said that there will be something for me to do. Pastor Phil was in the dream. No, I'm not dreaming about you, Pastor Phil. <laughs> He's disappointed. Moses gave up all of this so that he may grab hold of eternity. The reason we struggle to give up all this is because we don't yet know the value of knowing Christ. Why was this guy able to give up all his precious pearls and to go after that one pearl? 
because he knew the value of that pearl your prayer today should be lord jesus remove these veils remove these shackles i want to truly know you bring me on this journey that i will come to know you lord why was this was this person able to leave all the sheep and go after the one because he knew the value of bringing in that back and the lord is reaching out to us to bring us back you have to know the season right now the spirit of god is preparing and he's going to move in the church all over the world he's returning us to the fullness of the true gospel the gospel which we saw the apostles preach the gospels which we saw were preached and such amazing things began such amazing things happened in the lives of simple people it's because it's not by us but it's given to the lord our lives given completely to the lord i don't pretend to say that it that it's it's true in my life yet but i want to i'm joyful to know that we are on the journey it's 5 years since he confronted us and he continues to by the way and we continue to walk in revival the lord is doing a revival he's preparing a bride who is going to, who is blameless amen is because we love you that we speak this to you because paul said my goal is not not really that you will prosper in this life and all that stuff that's all the fries the extras but i want to present you holy and blameless to christ and that is the leader's job we live in a christian generation that is bondaged to entertainment from monday to saturday it is entertainment so as pastors you know what's the pressure on us on sunday we've got to entertain the people as well how's the worship oh what an anointing what a lighting what a frills the people have to feel good worship is not about receiving anything for us can i tell you worship is giving everything to the lord in our life right your name is higher your name yes we sang that right your name stands above them all all power and dominions all power and position your name stands above them all and then when i go out my name is the highest my name is because if jesus is not on the throne of those decisions in your life you are sitting on the throne How did you decide that? Oh, I don't know. I feel a peace. I sense, oh, I know. It's circumstantial. Your circumstances shall lead you into all truth is not what Jesus said. The spirit of God will lead you into all truth. Are you with me? This is the gospel. It is about giving and today we encounter a gospel that is all about getting. It is about getting. It is about receiving and here I see Jesus he is derobing himself he is humbling himself he is letting go of position power name you know my one of our brothers who's teaching us who taught us the word through a season a couple of years ago until last year he said a, a statement i want to tell all leaders here he said you know we we've, we've created some form of a ministry for ourselves and you start as anthony when you're born again and then you do a little bit and then your brother antony cuz now you you know exude some form of spirituality and you do a few things and god's using you and then after that you become past antony that's the call and then reverend antony bishop antony you have a overseas ministry you have a global ministry this is how we've created it so the young ones after us are aspiring for the same thing and then he said to me but you look at jesus and it doesn't look like a successful ministry at all in our terms because at the very end he had a crowd he had people he had miracles and then he started talking the eternal stuff and people started leaving him and then when he reached towards the end he had 12 around the table and he said peter oh you all stand for you lord many of us are going to be like the rich young ruler you believe you're going to stand and then he'll say give away everything and you'll walk away sad because that moment 
when god speaks to us you will truly know who you are in christ and here it is you know he said to me he challenged me and he said jesus was on the cross everybody left him hanging there half naked beaten broken bruised that doesn't look like today's concept of a successful ministry does it but hanging there on the cross he was in the center of god's will result is secondary obedience is everything that's how those who have gone before us have laid down their lives that's how i talk about people like saint thomas who came down to india sat on that hill watching the place where he died they counted it all as loss everything we have everything we own the day we come to know jesus and value him that's when i said to the lord lord i said to him, by the time we finish this message we'll know for sure they probably never call us back or revival happen <laughs> i said praise god that's the way we want to do it either they'll never call us back or there will be people who pick this up and go after god and say lord i'm repenting before you what do i need to do now remember he has already done everything we just have to yield ourselves to him we say repent sever all ties and come on this journey of faith grab these scriptures we shared with you get on your knees because if you look at the life of moses the life of jesus it's a life of prayer we can get so busy in activity but we can't pray can we and their lives were soaked in prayer jesus was consecrated he didn't have to do much he walked through the town and the demons were already running <laughs> why do you come here to disturb us wouldn't you like that happen in your life yes yes seek after him get to know him and let him transform us from the inside it's a journey it's a journey when you're ready to give up your position and your profile it means nothing to you what think about you're getting ready for revival you're getting ready for god to move powerfully i want to close with this and say repent sever all ties with everything of this world sever ties and get to know jesus because when his when you know him <laughs> words cannot describe this life of adventure with the holy spirit oh rekaba sande ka shando ro sandara it is so wonderful it is unspeakable it is heaven flowing through your veins as you walk on this earth that's what god is calling us for i can ask you to pray and repent before god repent and say i'm sorry lord i have been on the throne of my decisions i'm sorry lord i have i still love money i love wealth i like nice cars and the flesh will be telling you don't listen to this preacher because god wants to bless you sonta bae na sedi ka shanda ka sanda shiva kananda ka ma shanda ka let's look to the lord thank you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus there's only one way to turn things around the bible shows us and it says repent turn to god and say lord forgive me i repent of my love for myself i repent for projecting myself give me grace to sever all ties with the world and give me grace lord to come out of this life of pleasure to come into this life with you where i am eternity minded we're not we don't want to be enemies of the cross with minds set on earthly things thank you jesus oh ra kamanda ra basanda ra basanda ra take a moment to think about it i'll get the lead us in a song shimanda basala kamanda ra basanda